Okay, perfect. So here we are, lesson number one, week one, okay, of Maya Dynamics 1. We're going to be rolling these things on a weekly basis for the next three months. So um, it's a long way to go. Maya 1, okay, this is the foundation course. This is the core of everything. And I want to make sure that you guys really get a solid, solid understanding, okay? Out of, out of all the courses that I teach, this is the most important one to watch. Even if you have experience, a little bit of experience or some experience, if you have the time, okay, in your spare time, go through some of these lessons uh, because you might find certain bits of information that you, they will be very useful for you, okay? Um, it's like that cheesy metaphor, okay? If you're going to make a building, the foundation has to be very solid or it's going to fall on your head. Well, as, as corny as it may sound, it is... It is like this, okay? So let's make sure that we get a real solid understanding. Ask me many, many questions throughout the weeks um, before we get into more complicated stuff, okay? Um, the way that I teach, okay, I tend, to, um, I tend to compress a lot of the information. I tend to trim out the fat and get rid of the, the bits that I don't think are that important or things that you can probably figure out on your own on your spare time, okay? So let's try to get them and maximize the time that we have together to, to go straight to the topic. Um, and I'm going to try to show you my version of working in effects, okay? Um, one thing that I want to make clear right from the very beginning is that there is no one way to do an effect. There's no one way to solve a situation or an issue, a problem, okay, in dynamics. Um, I'm going to show you my way. doesn't mean that it's the only way, the perfect way, uh, okay? It's something that, you know, over the years I've been developing, you know, my, my way of working, my way of thinking about dynamics. Um, and it has worked so far for me, okay? And for my previous students. This is not the first time I run this course. This is actually, you are the fifth, probably, or sixth group that I'm running this. So um, it has been tested really well. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and begin right away. Let's not waste any time. So, um, oh, well, one, one last thing is if you are not uh, very familiar with Maya, okay? Let's say that you still have a bit of doubts of how to navigate or this and that or modeling or animation. Um, I'm assuming that you have a certain level of use of Maya. I'm not expecting you to be a, a, a professional, a generalist or something. I just, I'm, I'm expecting certain things from you that I cannot just go back and teach. I cannot teach you how to model. I cannot teach you how to animate. Uh, we don't have time. We need to stay focused. But that doesn't mean that you're on your own. Uh, we do have another set of recordings that are going to go live as, as this one's go live. Actually, the live course is happening at the same time as this one in another classroom in the same platform. Uh, and Igor, Igor Gonzalez is teaching uh, Introduction to Maya for FX. Okay, we call it we call it that way. It's basically it's not a modeling course. It's not an animation course. It's just something that will get you a bit more comfortable with Maya. If you have no experience, that it gets you, you know, up, up to a certain point, ready to be able to take my courses. Okay, so it's like a preparation course for this one. So if you if you're watching this lesson today, you feel like you're a bit um, excellent. So yeah, you guys, uh, all of you, as you know, you're welcome to watch the recordings. Um, and perfect. So it's happening there. It's going to happen in English and in Spanish. The same same scenario for the open source. Okay. Um, I was saying that. Um, so if you feel that you know you're getting a bit behind or something, or something you really don't quite get, don't worry. Go go watch the intro stuff. Watch this one at the same time. You know, it's, everything's going to be okay. We, we, we got your back. So starting there, um, for a few things you have to set up first. Okay. Now that you're going to be working with dynamics, there's a couple of things that you need to uh, keep an eye on. One of them is definitely just uh, being on the Dynamics menu. Simple as that. So on the top here, make sure that you're on the Dynamics section. It's different than the end Dynamics, okay? So Dynamics for now, okay? We're going to see end Dynamics in the whole Nucleus Solver on level two. For now, we're going to stay in Dynamics for the whole course. Um, that's step one. And step two is just to make sure that your playback speed, okay, is set to um, this. Let me show you. So right now, you can see here. We have a playback speed, uh, playback speed, I'm sorry, to play every frame. This is very important, okay? Um, you're gonna see that uh, as we start playing with dynamics, but the reason behind this is that Maya dynamics, okay, particles and soft bodies and fluids, they need to calculate certain bits of information on a per frame basis. And they're gonna take that information that they calculate, being uh, particle age, velocities, positions, whatever it is that it's calculating, it's going to take the information from one frame and use it on the next. So if usually, okay, if, if you're not doing dynamics and you're working, you know, with animation, for example, you will probably have this set to real time 24 frames. The difference is that in this case, uh, Maya is going to try to, um, 
is focusing more, not more, not, not that much in, ca in calculation, but it's focusing a lot more on display. So it's going to make sure it, on this setting like this, real time, it's going to make sure that it shows you um, the real time playback. It's, it's mostly used for animation. That doesn't work for us because what Maya will do in order to achieve 24 frames per second is either skip, well, it's going to skip a few frames, okay? So it might need to jump a few frames ahead. It's not really reliable. It's not guaranteed that it's going to go frame after frame. So this is no good for us. This is going to lead into um, uh, particles uh, misbehaving, soft bodies exploding, fluids you know failing. So if for some reason while you're testing, I don't know, let's say that you change your Maya or change your computer, and you start doing a scene that was working before, and then it starts looking a bit funky, but you really haven't done anything different, keep an eye on this, okay? Make sure that you have this set up, okay? So play every frame from, from now on, that should be yours. The max playback speed, I have it on real time 24, is because I want to keep up with the broadcast that I'm doing, okay? You don't really have to keep this one like this. Yours could be at free, okay? So what happens at free is that Maya is going to... Um, if you have a very strong computer, Maya is able to, to show you frames as fast as possible, okay? So there's, there's no top maximum limit on how fast the playback, uh, the timeline can run, okay? If I keep it like this, because my computer is a bit, quite strong, um, I, I've seen before that if I keep it on free, what's gonna happen is when I hit play on particles, you on, at home, you won't be able to see uh, a smooth movement, smooth motion. You're gonna have like jumping, you know, skipping frames. It's gonna be um, uncomfortable. But for you at home, this is fine. Okay, if you want to work quickly, this is good. But for me, I'm going to keep it at 24. And then just going to hit save. And at least you have Maya for now set up to be able to start doing particles. Okay. So week one, okay, we, uh, as I said, we have 12 weeks to go and a lot of st things to do. But um, I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable emitting particles. Okay. That is, that is my first objective. We're not going to deal today with any particle motion. We're not going to deal with fields yet. We're not going to deal with... A rendering or particle attributes. Today, we're just going to emit particles and get comfortable with this. Um, in the past, okay, I had um, three assignments or four assignments on the on level one, okay, and I have to say that none of my courses actually managed to finish all of the assignments. Which, you know, no, no matter no matter what how much time they had, for some reason they never managed to finish all of them. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to give you the final assignment at the very beginning. Okay, not today, but in the next class, you're going to get it. Um, and we're going to work through in, throughout the 11 weeks on that one because that is going to be on your demo reel. Okay? Uh, I saw it before, and it was disappointing for me that, that you know we worked so hard for 12 weeks, and then you don't finish your assignment. There's no point on, on doing this. Okay? So it's going to be slightly different. Today, you're going to get one assignment. It's just to warm you up, to get you used to the system, to get you used to uh, the community, okay? the student community, which is very important. Um, and, uh, and then next week, we're going to get a bit more complicated, okay? So, uh, particle emission. Um, well, this, like I said, I'm in the dynamics menu. We're going to go to particles, okay? And I'm going to use, I'm going to tear this off, okay? So we have access to it a bit uh, easier. I'm going to start with the particle tool, okay? And this is a bit of a underestimated uh, tool for me, you know? Not, not, many, not many TDs are using this. Um, and I think it has a lot of potential. You know, some some of the things that we try to overcomplicate over the over time can be probably solved with this type of emission. And the particle tool, okay, is just a way to sketch particles to draw them on the screen. Okay, uh, if you have had some practice, I know that Shamana, you have practice with 3D Max thinking particles. Same thing for you, Ray, Rafe, and uh, and Rodrigo. You guys have done something. I'm sure you've seen particles on the screen before done by you, one way or the other. Um, but I'm pretty sure that you probably haven't used the particle tool. You maybe used just a particle emitter, which is a normal normal thing. And we're going to get to that in a second, but this one is quite interesting. So what's going to happen, I'm going to open uh, my outliner so you can keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, so here's my outliner. I'm going to probably put it on this side of the screen. Right now there's nothing on, on, on the scene, of course, as you can see. Um, I'm not going to go over all the attributes because some of these things I'm going to is going to be explained later. Some of them are very self-explanatory, and others um, you're going to figure out on your own. Okay, so I'm not going to go over all of them. Actually, it's better to to start playing with them, and then we're going to see it together. Okay. Um, so the idea here is that you can you have a number of particles. This is going to be a, a like a paint effects brush kind of thing. It's not a paint effects, but it's just one of those artisan brushes. Okay, that you can go and, and paint particles on the screen. Uh, how many particles you're going to be painting? 
But in this case, you know, you can reset this tool. Let me just make sure that I have nothing left over from, from other courses. There we go. So this is the default behavior that you probably have in your Maya. Um, one thing before I forget, I'm sorry, try not to follow along on, on Maya with me as I do this because you might lose the concentration. So try to focus on, on watching this, focus on asking me questions. That's a very, very important bit. Uh, and then with the recording, you can go back and just uh, practice in, on your own time. I, th I think it's the more effective this way. But for now, if you had your Maya somewhere there, you will see that this is the default behavior. And one particle is going to be one particle, in this case, per click. Okay. So if I just leave it like that, Okay, and I jump into my viewport here, you can see, hopefully you can see there's a little red dot over here, okay? Actually, I'm gonna hide my grip, okay? So just make it a bit easier to see. And every time I click, I'm placing one particle, okay? But you can see that there's nothing going on on my outliner yet. Somehow there are things, okay, on my screen, but nothing is registered on the scene, okay? And these are just, uh, think of them as placeholders, okay? The moment you hit enter on your keyboard, when you're ready, when you're done, and you say, okay, well, this is the distribution I need. You hit enter, like I'm gonna do. And you can see now on my, on my screen, you're gonna get now a particle, it's got a particle system, okay? It's just a particle, there's no emitter, as you can see here, yeah? Again, for those of you who have done a bit of particles before, you're used to seeing an emitter and a particle system created at the same time, not with this method, okay? Now, why do I think this is a useful tool? Because, um, if this, for some reason, is the exact distribution you have for whatever it is, you know, let's say that later on you will see um, emission from textures and, and geometry and things like that. Um, you know, this is as precise as it gets. If you need to place a per particular particle uh, on a position, specific place, then this is the way to go. You point and click. Um, and then these particles are, as any other particles, are no different than, than the regular ones created from a normal emitter meaning that this can be affected by fields, uh, expressions, you name it, okay? The same thing, gold. So in a way, you know, to get a distribution like this in a different scenario using a regular emitter, it will be nearly impossible, okay? If that is the exact pattern again. So this is one of the behaviors, okay? Just by sketching one particle at a time, uh, but you can also do multiple particles at once. Let me just uh, double click on my tool again. Remember, this is on the particles menu, particle tool. Okay, and I'm opening the options so you can see what's going on in here. So if you let's say, let's say that one particle at a time is not what you need, you need to really have a bit more, I mean, more particles in there. You can, of course, increase the amount. But the thing is, you have to keep an eye on this, okay? The maximum radius has to be any number other than zero. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with five particles. Every time you click, you end up with five particles on top of each other. And that is a big problem for us, in effect, okay? Um, there is no real reason why you will need to have uh, multiple particles on top of each other occupying the same space. Okay, There's, it's a waste of memory, it's a waste of resources, you won't look any different. So um, unless you're dealing with really semi-transparent, but there's no real reason, honestly, why you will have uh, a particle on the same exact position as other. So that's why the maximum radius activates when you change the number of particles from anything other than one. Um, and then you basically specify, uh, let's say, one unit. Okay, so if I go into my screen, keep an eye over here, I click, and it looks like a bigger red dot. If you can start to come in closer, then you can see that there are indeed, believe me, five placeholders. Okay, remember if I hit enter, then there you go. There's one particle system with five particles on that distribution. Okay. Um, simple stuff. Okay, you will think, well, you know, yeah, whatever. So, you know, that that's, you know, not that useful well we'll see in a minute um this is just by the point and click you can also sketch your particles okay same idea okay so have a, a number of particles of five with a maximum radius of one in my interval okay so you can just now click and drag and now i'm getting okay a different uh i'm gonna close this so we don't get interrupted by my email okay so now you can just click and drag same idea okay and remember once you hit enter here we go, there's one particle system with this distribution. Okay, I still find this very, very useful. I guess the first time the first time you see these things, and it will happen to you on the course uh, throughout the weeks, you will see things that I'm doing, and then ideas will come to your mind. I guess the most basic of all will be, oh, I can write my name with particles. Yes, you can. There might be better ways to do it, more precise, but yes, it's something you can do. 
Um, that is uh, sketching of particles. Okay, like again, I, I'm just not going to dive too deeply into this because there's no real, you know, much point in that. You can also create a grid of grid of particles. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that one, you know, the one system. I don't really have to delete it. I just want to keep it clean for you guys to not to get confused. Um, so let's go ahead and double click that. Okay, you get a, create a particle grid. Um, and for that, you need to just click the beginning and the end of your grid, okay? So you can do, this is the particle spacing, okay? The separation in units. Uh, if I open my grid, okay? And let's go to the top view. Okay, so here's my grid. Uh, I'm going to click at the beginning, the origin, okay? And I'm gonna click at the end of my grid. And you hit enter, and here we go. I'm gonna hide my grid so you can, well, I'm not gonna hide it just yet, so I'm just gonna show you what you will expect to see from this tool, which when having a um, particle spacing of 0.5, okay, so this is one Maya unit, 0.5, you get a particle, okay? Nothing, nothing too complicated. And they're perfectly spaced, okay? And this is useful for, well, I tend to see a lot of tutorials, people uh, showing uh, Maya fields using grids, okay? Because it's, it's very clear um, to see how a force is actually acting, so, that's one way. Or if you need a perfectly distributed uh, chunk of particles, then there you go. It works on a three-dimensional way, so you have to click on the beginning, switch your camera um, to the you know, to graphic view or something, and then you could get an actual volume of particles like that as well. Um, and for now, this is what it is. Okay, so that's the particle tool. Again, nothing probably major, super uh, impressive, but for me, for example, if you had something like this, what happens if you... Let's say you had a, um, let's say a helix. I'm just gonna make any piece of geometry. Go back to my perspective view, frame this, and you will remember this once we start doing the, assi the assignment, okay? The, for next week, okay? There's gonna be a need to do something like this. I won't spoil it yet, but um, let's say that you have this piece of geometry, okay? And they ask you to do, they want you to do, for example, I don't know, drips or something has supposed to come off of this piece of geometry on a specific section. Let's say that this is, I don't know, uh, I don't know, some sort of food or, or a character or whatever, and they say they need in this region, okay, they need to place particles in there and, and have them, um, I don't know, render them as something else or use them as another emitter. For now, what I'm gonna say is, okay, why, why do you do if you need to have a specific pattern of particles on top of the surface, okay? Um, you later will see that you can use a texture and that is doable to a certain extent, but it's not that flexible and it might take longer. What you can do in a situation like that, okay, is for example, select your piece of geometry and make it live just by clicking on this little magnet guy right here, okay? Making the surface live, as you probably know, is uh, it's just going to allow you to draw on top of it. I'm going to select my particle, sorry, my particle tool here. I'm going to uh, sketch particles. I'm not going to do a grid. I'm actually going to sketch them, but I'm going to make sure that probably my particle radius, my maximum radius, I'm sorry, is set to 0.5. I just want to know, I just want to go too big on this, probably 0.5 is too much. I'm going to do, let's say, 1.5, okay, something like this. Now that the surface is live, means that I can paint on top of it, and it's going to follow the actual topology of this. So I can start doing this kind of stuff, okay, so I can draw, I can go around, okay, I can go in here. And probably go over there. And you can see that these particles, as I draw them, they are actually stuck onto the surface, okay? So we we'll go over there, the one right here. You can see that, you know, very quickly, you can start placing particles, uh, you know, very, very precisely on top of your surface, okay? You can draw it over here. These particles, okay, for now, you know, the moment I hit enter, there you go, you get a particle distribution. You don't really have to, for example, if you don't want to show your polygons, it's okay. But here you have a very interesting pattern, okay? A three-dimensional pattern that it will be quite tricky to get otherwise, okay? Or you will, you know, there's there's ways, like I said at the beginning, there are many ways to do it in every effect. Um, but this one, being able to grab a piece of geometry, it doesn't have to be something probably as simple as I picked. It could be a character, it could be a, an object, okay? A very complicated object. If you want to place particles in very specific areas, particle tool is the way to go, okay? Very quick, very cheap and uh, very flexible, okay? So here we go. That is one application, and it's gonna come to you, like I said, on the assignment, so keep that in mind. 
the assignments are not tests. Okay, you're, it's just for you for your reels. So obviously, I will I will help you if you forget about something here. So no worries there. Once you're done with your geometry, just uh, remember to select it and just uh, click on the magnet again, and then it's back to normal. Okay. So here we go. So that is the particle tool, the most basic uh, and sometimes forgotten of all. I'm gonna get rid of it, and let's go back to the well, the, the more conventional types of emission being, for example, the create emitter. Okay, so I'll go to the options of that. And we have, I'm going to reset my settings, okay, so I don't have any leftovers from before. This is the way it comes. Uh, you can enter a particle name, you don't really have to, okay, you can do that later. I encourage you to keep your scenes labeled and, and correctly named. Um, not just for you, because I'm assuming you eventually will be working at a studio and you're going to be passing this, those scene files to others and it, it's very, very annoying and painful to have to open someone else's scene file and it's a complete mess, okay? So that's that's not really professional. So let's go ahead and from, from training, let's go ahead and get used to these kind of things. But the fact is that you don't really have to type it at the beginning. You can change your mind about the name later, no problem. If you don't type a name, Maya will give one for you. So there's nothing here to do. On the emitter types, okay, if you drag this down, you will see there are three of them. We're gonna talk about them slowly as we go along the course. Um, let's start with the Omni, which is the easier one, okay? And you have a whole, you know, certain attributes, okay? And these attributes, you can see some of them are grayed out. And it's just because they will be activated depending on the type of emitter, okay? So the Omni emitter is probably second after the particle tool, okay? So this is a relatively basic emitter. A lot of these attributes are going to be shared throughout different emitters, so we're not going to be repeating them over and over. If I create an Omni emitter, okay, you hit apply. Before I do, keep an eye on my outliner. I'm going to put it right next to it so you can see it quickly. You will see that if you hit apply that you get a particle system as before, but you also get an emitter node, okay? And um, the emitters, I tend to, you know, this is my preference. I tend to like to work with the emitters and particles using the channel box, as opposed to using the attribute editor. That's up to you. I find it faster for me to locate things here on this list, okay? It looks like a long list and I know, you know, probably daunting at the beginning. But a lot of these things are, you know, it's very simple stuff and it gets shared from emitter to emitter. An omni emitter is just imagine like a point light, okay? Just a point, it's a point in space that is going to shoot particles in all directions, okay? It's an omnidirectional emitter. Um, so for this, okay, with the, with the particle tool, you don't really have to play back your scene. You just, you just place in particles, painting them, okay? Um, as opposed to right now where I have an emitter in a particle system and I don't see anything on frame one. It's just because obviously you have to calculate your scene, okay? And for those of you who are very, very, very new to this, when I mean calculate your scene, it doesn't mean you have to go and grab a notepad and a calculator and start writing things. It's just hit and play. That's all simple as that, okay? So you hit play, and there we go. I'm going to probably go into, let's see, this, this mode will be good for you to see. If I hit play, okay, you will see that obviously the timeline keeps running. I probably gave too many frames. So it looks a bit... There we go. So it's a bit easier to see. We're on frame 40 at the moment. We hit play, and there we go. Okay, we got particles being shot out, and these particles are moving. But like I said at the beginning of this class, I'm not going to worry about particle motion today. It's only about emission. Okay, so here we go. Omni emitter is a point in space, okay, that will shoot particles everywhere. So if I zoom out and I rotate around this thing, you can see it's almost like a sphere. These particles are going in all directions. Okay, while they're moving, we'll talk about it later. Um, Perfect, here we go. So if I select my emitter, okay, one thing that you obviously need to care for today uh, is the amount of particles, okay? And this is gonna be very, very uh, important, something you're gonna be dealing with every every shot that you do, and pretty much every effect that you do, is uh, the question of how many particles do you need and how do you get them into your scene file as effectively and quicker as possible, okay? So, um, the emitter is responsible for the amount of particles, okay? The particle system itself will be responsible for the look of it and the behavior and part of, partly of the motion of the particle. But the emitter is going to deal, the first thing it's going to deal with is going to be the amount of particles that you're going to put. And that is called the rate, okay, of the emitter. And here it is. Okay, so if I select it on my channel box, like I said, I find it easier to deal with. But you can also find everything that I'm going to show you on the attribute editor, okay? So here we go. So if you scroll to the top uh, on the basic emitter attributes, okay, you have you have the rate. And as you can see on the on the attribute editor, it gives you a hint of what's happening. So it's saying particles uh, over second. So it's particles per second. Remember that um, Maya is going to work uh, by default on 24 frames per second. 
This means, okay, if you use this logic right now, that you're going to get 24 particles, sorry, 100 particles every 24 frames, right? It takes 24 frames to do one second, okay, at the current settings. Uh, you can verify this, and if you don't believe me, you can just go from the beginning. Get used to uh, rewinding and playing your scene always, you know, you're going to keep repeating that over the week, so don't worry there. But I'm going to rewind and hit play again, but I'm probably going to go frame by frame all the way to frame 24. So it takes me... Oh, I'm on frame 25, so one more. Um, how do I know how many particles I have? Okay, this is something that um, probably is be best for the next class, but I'll show you at the moment so you can see the relationship of the rate. Uh, we're expecting 100 particles, okay? So if I select my particles and you go to the particle shape, okay, you can see that uh, on the first tab at the very top, you have something called the count, and the count set is 99 particles, okay? On frame 25 probably if I go frame 26 you will get 104 okay so it's roughly 100 particles per second so here we go so that is I don't want to look at the particles anymore here and like stay with my emitter but this is what's happening there okay so the rate is going to control that I'm going to go back to my channel box as you can imagine of course if you set it to 10,000 you get a lot more particles okay so I'm gonna hit play here we go um, and there's the question or always to keep in mind, okay, the number of particles, obviously the more particles you have, the slower your system is going to become, it's going to get. Um, mostly is because of the video card limitations, okay, so depending on the, how strong your video card is going to be, you might be able to display uh, a lot more particles in your screen, okay. Um, rendering is a different different story, but um, if, you find, if you have a scene with lots and lots of particles and it's getting very, very slow, um, blame your video card for it okay so keep an eye on the rate It's going to be very important we're going to deal with this later when we start killing particles and all that but rate is going to give you then the amount of particles with the omni emitter um, because i don't care about motion today there's not much else to talk about um, so we're going to leave the other the other attributes for later okay so this is my omni emitter i'm going to leave it here i'm going to make one of the others uh, let's see what else we have here create emitter we have a directional emitter, which to me is, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't use this one very much, but I find it a bit useless. I'm going to delete my Omni, just so there's no confusion, but oh, I'm going to undo this. You can see that I created another emitter, okay? I went and created a directional emitter, and it created an emitter node and a particle system again, okay? If I hit play, I'm going to have both running at the same time. You can see the difference in color, okay? So you can have, this kind of tells you that you can have as many emitters and particle systems as you want but be careful there we're going to talk about that later again um, you have to be clever and you have to be uh, you know keep, keep keep your particle systems to a minimum you know as much as you can emitters is a different story you could have multiple emitters connected to one particle system it's a long way to go so later we'll talk about that but you can see that you can actually have multiples in the scene no problem there i don't care about the omni at the moment i'm going to get rid of it and i'm going to show you the directional and it's very very simple these particles are in a straight line, okay? And so this, this emitter is just gonna put particles, sorry, just, okay. It's just gonna launch particles on a specific direction. So if you select your emitter, you also have a rate. It's the same thing, okay? The rate is uh, universal for all the emitters. They all have it. Uh, but if you scroll down a little bit, then you have your direction, okay? These three guys over here. Again, that dictates particle motion, so I'm not going to dive too much into it, but I can tell you that if you keep an eye on this, let's say that I'm going to go to my top view, which is a bit easier for you to see. So it's called a directional emitter, only puts particles in one specific direction or a combination of axes. You can see that my direction, I'm going to close this one. My direction is uh, 1 in X, 0 in Z, and Y and 0 in Z. So it's matching okay my gizmo down here okay so my x-axis is pointing in this direction that's where my particles are going any combination of these numbers will obviously give you a different vector okay so one in x one in z you will expect to be running to the right and also you know combination of these two vectors so is like a 45 degree angle running this way and here we go there it goes um one thing to keep in mind is everything here Okay, in the channel box, you can see is you, you're able to keyframe it, okay, using regular keyframe animation. Um, so that tells you that this direction can be keyframed. So you can have particles shooting in one direction and rotate it to another. But it's always going to give you a straight line, all right? 
So that's what I'm, I'm, I haven't been using this one much, honestly, in my years. But it's there for you. And then the last one on that part of the menu, okay, is going to be the volume emitter. And that one is very, very cool. Um, so let's just go open one again, create emitter. And it's going to be, the last one is the volume emitter. And here we go. Go back to my perspective view. And it creates, uh, there are different shapes, okay? The, the cube is the one that I had selected myself. Um, probably is the default value for, for the type of volume that you have. But again, it has a rate, not a problem there. You can see on top of rate is the volume. You can change that to Omni, okay? You, you could change them after the fact, okay? I'm going to keep it on volume. Um, and then if you scroll down a bit, and, and that's one of the things that kind of annoys me a little bit, you know, I would have put the volume shape right on the, onto this one. But if you scroll down, and if you go a bit further down, you can see that you have the volume shape attribute over here. And it's set to cube, and you can just switch it to anything you like. Okay, so cylinders, spheres. Okay, so this one is just going to be, as you can yeah, see. Um, Luis, Luis, can I make, can a, make a, question? a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, what uh, there is in the uh, emitter type and in the attribute editor, uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, different um, types of uh, emitters, but uh, when you create it, you only have three, direct, omni, direction, and, and volume. Okay. Because no I can problem. see... Yeah, uh, good, good question. No worries. Surface <laughs> and curve. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. That's because, um, that's what I was saying that the, from, from this part, if you go to particles, uh, create a meter from this menu, I, I was done with it. Uh, but the next menu down is, is actually where you start emitting from objects. Okay, so emission from object is going to allow you to emit particles from surfaces and curves. It's a weird, weird because if you go to emit from object, you can see you can still have an omni emitter. But now you have surface and curve. Okay, and we're going to talk about them in just one second. So it's just that. The thing is that when you go to the to the attribute editor, it will show you everything it can. Okay. So for now, that's uh, yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. So volume emitters are pretty cool um, because if you pay, you know, well, not only you know you get actually a, a volume of particles straight up. Okay. By default, like this, it almost behaves as an omni emitter. So there's nothing special yet to it. What I do like a lot is that um, you can see these arrows inside. Okay. It's telling you what the initial velocities of this emitter are, okay? So what can you do with this emitter um, in order to push particles in certain directions? Probably a topic for next week, but again, I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek on what's happening here. Um, one thing bef before I, I go too deep into it, uh, if you're working with any type of emitter, like I said, you have a long list of attributes. Those attributes are not going to work for all emitters, okay? They have, uh, obviously, the directional emitter will use the direction, right? Um, an omni emitter will only use the rate, pretty much, and the speed. Um, and then you have, for example, if you have a volume emitter, then you can scroll down, and everything that has the word volume in it, it will apply to it. It's just the list doesn't get dynamically uh, cleaned up as you switch from one emitter to the other. So that's something to keep in mind, okay? Uh, but if you scroll down to the, to the volume section, you will see that... Um, you have certain certain attributes here that you can play along with. So pretty much anything at the bottom down here. So the volume offsets, uh, section radius, away from center. This is what I find very interesting here. Okay, these guys around here. Away from center, away from axis, along axis, and the around axis. If you have used Maya before a little bit and you have played with fields, uh, there is a field called the volume axis field, which has the same exact attributes, okay? Um, so a volume emitter is, has the ability to move particles in a very interesting way. An omni emitter will just push them in all directions. A directional one is just one line. Pretty boring stuff, but the volume ones are pretty interesting. So right now you can see that the away from center is set to 1. Okay, if I set that to 0, you can see that my gizmo changes. Okay, So basically what it's telling me is that from the center of this box, these particles are going to be pushed away in all directions. That is exactly what the omni emitter will do. That's why it looked like an omni emitter at the beginning. Um, you have an away from axis, okay, set to 1. So these two guys, away from center is set to 1. If you put that to 0, okay, so there's no difference in here. Away from axis will be from, from the center axis of it. So in this case, doesn't really matter. It will be more visible uh, on a different type of on like a cylinder or something. Um, along the axis as well, but around the axis might work. Okay, so what's happening, let me just show you here. 
you can see that the, the icon is changing to kind of give you an idea what's going on, okay? So when I turn on the run axis, if I put it back to zero, we just get particles being shot out from the center in all directions, okay? If I put that to zero, let's just get rid of this so it doesn't get confusing for you. And I use the, well, let's try this one, the along axis. You can see that this line comes out. It comes out with an arrow. Um, if you hit play, then particles, as you can imagine, they're going to move into that direction. Okay. Well, that's fine. I like it better than the directional because, of course, it has a bit of thickness in here. So it's a bit more, uh, seems to be more useful. Uh, and, of course, you can revert the direction of that just by changing the number from 1 to negative 1. No problem there. That's easy. Um, what I like a lot is this one, the around axis. Okay. So if you hit 1... You can see now that you get a similar axis that you had before, okay, a center axis, but you do get this line, okay, in a spiral telling you that these particles are going to start rotating as they come out. So if you rewind and hit play, then you get this kind of motion, okay. So you can see that, you know, for, for depending on your effect, okay, if it's something basic, um, the, the, the inclusion of fields and the use of fields is not, uh, you know, ex absolutely necessary. Is, you know, obviously you might find yourself having to use fields for other things, but these particles can have some sort of interesting motion right from the very beginning with the help of the emitter itself, okay? And this is as simple as an, as an effect could get, okay? So it's one emitter, one particle system. It can get any simpler than that, okay? So it's very quick for your memory on the computer. It's very, very fast. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a way to start, okay? So you, before you could, you could achieve the same result by putting a, a particle system of... Um, an emitter in a field that will replicate this motion, but right now you can just skip the field part and still get the same result. Okay, that is a volume emitter. We'll talk about it more later. Okay, um, because we have plenty of time for that. What I'm going to show you quickly is then um, what Raphael was asking. So basically, um, the next section down. Okay, so we completed the emit. Uh, sorry, the create emitter part. Let's go to the emit from object, a very popular um, section. Okay, to be using. Again, I don't know why the Omni, uh, well, the, I do know, but uh, Omni and Directional, I will keep them on the other menu if it was me. Um, what matters in my case right now is surface and curve. So what we're going to do is create uh, just a regular anything, polygon. Let's just make a poly, oh, come on, just for fun. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to scale this a little bit so it's easy for you guys to see. Let me just fix my manipulators a little, okay. Okay, so here's my surface, a cone, poly shape. Um, there is a way to emit particles out of this piece of geometry, okay? So it's very simple. You just have to select your geometry. I'm going to move my aligner here so you can see what's going to happen. Keep an eye on this. I'm going to switch my emitter type then to surface. The rate and all that, I'm going to probably reset everything to make sure it's fine. Okay, so surface. Leave everything as it is. Don't worry, you can change everything later and hit create. When you hit create, you'll see what's happening on my aligner. So now you can see the particle system and something went under the actual geometry itself. And if you open it up, it's your emitter. Okay. So this doesn't mean, okay, usually when you see geometry uh, under or things under each other is uh, the parenting, okay, some sort of relationship. In this case, it means more um, that the geometry itself is becoming the emitter, okay. Yes, by association, if you move your geometry around, the emitter will go with it. So, but it's more, it's not really a parenting, it's more... Uh, connection of the geometry and the emitter itself. So uh, that being said, you can just rewind and hit play, and there we go. As you can imagine, particles are starting to come from the cone. Okay? What happens if you hit your emitter? You will see that it's the same exact thing as before. Same attribute list. You still have a rate, so those things are never going to go away. Uh, but right now, you have a piece of geometry that doesn't have to be static like mine. It could be a deforming piece of geometry. It can be a character. We will see those things coming up. Cloth. Uh, many, many things before. Um, so here we go. So that is a geom you know, emission from geometry. I'm going to leave it, and I'm also going to create a curve. Okay. So let me just create a CVE curve tool. Okay, just click a few times. Let me make sure that I'm showing curves myself. Okay. Let me just go to the top view. Okay, and then just click a few times. You get a curve you can also emit particles from this curve. So you same procedure, you're gonna select your curve, you're gonna to go to particles, emit from object, and you're going to open up now the curve emission. 
leave everything at default, that's totally fine with me. You hit create, the same thing happens, okay? A new particle system gets created and you have an actual emitter underneath your um, curve. So uh, let's say that you're doing this, okay? And, and, and the little assignment I'm gonna give you this week is, um, is gonna need you to have multiple emitters, okay? Multiple things. Um, but sometimes you don't wanna, you don't wanna hit play and have all the emitters work at the same time. You, you want to focus on one area. Um, there are two ways you can fix that situation. Let's say you want to focus on the curve and not the cone. Right now, if I hit play, of course, I'm going to get both shooting particles. Okay. So let's say you want to focus on the curve, and this is getting annoying. You know, how do I how do I disable my cone from emission? Well, you know, there's a couple of ways. Okay, you can if it's just one. You know, one of the ways is selecting the emitter of the cone, and you can just go and say if my rate is a hundred. And that's what controls the number of particles. If I set that to zero, of course, that's it. It's done, right? So if you hit rewind, hit play, nothing happens. Only the curve. That is one way, but that, that also needs, you know, you need to go in and change your rate. And let's say that you forgot the number. You don't want to touch it. Or they say that it's animated. You don't want to blow all your animation away and then just, you know, don't, you know, just to be able to turn it off. So what you can do in that case is turn the particles off. Okay, you can select your particles. And if you're going to show you here quickly, if you go um, under the particle, on the, uh, sorry, the channel box, you have something called is dynamic and it's set to on. If you set the is dynamic to off, these particles are not going to calculate. Right now, uh, I put the rate back to 100. I don't really need to show you, but why, why not? So here you go. So everything is as you expect. If I rewind and then you say my is dynamic to off or zero, okay, and you hit play. Same result, and now you get to keep your rate on your emitter set to whatever you want it, okay? So that is another way to do it. If you go to the attribute editor, okay? The is dynamic is a little checkbox over here, so that's also a way to just turn it on and off, okay? Just by clicking on this guy. So there we go, perfect. That's how you turn it off. Um, in a nutshell, okay, that's emission. There's a lot more to talk about, and we're gonna continue. Um, one thing I wanna show you, Actually, let's let's figure this out. Oh, okay, so this is the type of emitters. Okay, the assignment that I want you to try this week. Okay, and to, to get a bit of you know start getting used to this new set of courses and things, it's gonna be. Um, let me just open it up. I'm gonna upload these things to the FTP as I promised. Okay, you guys, well everybody watch everybody taking the course live of course has access to the FTP. Everyone who donated from the content supporter forward will have access to the FTP as well. So you guys, um, what I what I decided to try to do with you guys is let me just uh, locate it here quickly. On the movie Thor, okay. Um, let me just open this. Should I open it with QuickTime? My mistake. Let me just close Flash. Okay. So on the movie Thor, we're not doing the movie Thor, okay? We are not doing the movie Thor. Let me just clear you out. I just want to show you um something that i find interesting okay so this is the whole intro sequence okay with the credits and all um here so this part here i kind of find it very very cool so let me just hit play and kind of stop it in the right frame but um again we're not trying to replicate this by any means okay i'm just going to give you a purpose for this time, okay so for this first assignment okay and you can see here that you have a three okay if well, i encourage you to find this clip yourself i'm sure you can find it anywhere in youtube or anything um a better quality i'm going to upload something to the ftp and maybe a screen capture will, will do be will do fine i might have one here myself but no uh, but this is meant to be a tree of, of some sort okay uh, and it's definitely you can see well your eye will get trained as we move along over the weeks but there's a lot of particles in here okay just a lot of particular there are fluids there are many many techniques in, involved in this many people worked on this I'm not saying that, you know, like I said, again, we're not expecting to replicate this by any means. But I do want you to try to get a tree made out of particles. That's what I want. And I want you to, you know, as much as you can to try to um, work out a scenario where you can implement multiple uh, particle emitters to one purpose. Okay, this thing, as you can see, the particles themselves, if you play this thing on your own, um, the particles themselves are not moving with the camera, so everything is pretty static, and that's what I want you to try this week. Okay? Like I said, no particle move. You can move the camera, doesn't mean that you know the, the shot has to be static. You can move your camera around, 
but we're going to try to stay very, very static over here. So here we go. So uh, a tree of particles. Okay, I'm going to give you a bit of a hint, and I'm going to let you continue on your own. Okay. Next week, we're also going to talk about particle emission, but we're also going to start moving into particle motion a little bit. But just to set you on the right direction, okay, um, I'm just going to freeze this up. A tree made of particles, and what else can you do with it? All right? So I'm going to give you a hint. If you go to the visor, okay, so general editors visor, you're going to have here, uh, well, many things. You've, probably you've seen this before, the visor, but on the paint effects, you have a section where you can find trees for you, okay? There are trees, and there are trees mesh. Some of them are animated. I'm not going to go into paint effects. This is not a paint effect course. Um, but if you just grab anything, let's just let's find a tree. Any tree. I want to do anything myself. You can go and make something better, of course. Um, this is there's one called Tree Simple, so even better. I'm going to drag this guy over here. Uh, it's just the paint brush, okay? Sorry, the paint effects brush. So I'm going to pick it up and draw. And okay, so well, I just drew a couple of trees, okay? So. Anyway, let's say that you have one tree. This is one way, okay? If you have your own tree that you model and it's something more artistic, by all means. Uh, this is just to paint effects. You cannot really um, emit from this, okay? My advice would be to convert this thing to geometry. So you go to modify, convert, and you will go to convert uh, uh, paint effects to polygons. I prefer polygons. You can use NURBS, but for something like this, it's probably better to use polygons. And you run this guy, and what you end up with is, you can get rid of this, and you end up with a piece of geometry, okay, that it has the main trunks and the leaves, okay? So let's say that you have this three, three, you know, you, know, you only want to keep one, so you can always go ahead and clean it up quickly. So I'm just going to keep, I mean, I could have just painted just the one tree, I don't know, I just made three for some reason, there we go. And from the other one... So from here, we can also delete the faces that we don't need and end up with just uh, the separation of this two. So there we go. Perfect. So now we have um, geometry okay, that you can use, as we saw today, for geometry emission. So let's say that this is my magnificent uh, tree from, uh, from Thor. How do I do this? Well, it's very simple. We just did it. Where you select the tree, uh, we're going to go to particles, emit from object. Okay, we're going to select this to say surface, okay? Leave everything as default, is fine. Hit create, done. You get now under the trunk, you get a um, emitter and you get a particle system, which you can probably name it, um, I don't know, let's call it base for, for some, just to start to get used to naming things. And then you have the leaves, but you can do the same thing. You can go to particles, emit from object. Okay, surface is gone, create, perfect. You get another emitter, okay? And another particle system which you can just go leave. And now you can deal with this too in a separate way. So one thing I want to show you is that the geometry itself doesn't have to be shown. You don't have to display this geometry to be able to, for this thing to work. You can just hide your polygons and then you hit play and then you end up with a mess. And the first is, well, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, that's not, that's not a tree made of particles, true. Um, it's because these particles are being emitted and they're moving, okay? And that's what I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna leave you with for today. And then next week we're gonna get the particles moving. I don't want the particles to move today. How do I stop them from moving? No problem. Very simple. The reason they're moving, and we're gonna talk about it in more depth in, uh, next week. The reason these particles are moving is because they have a velocity being applied to them by the emitter. You saw it when I did the volume emitter. You saw these particles spinning depending on what I did in the long axis, the around the axis. You saw those guys moving uh, based on the numbers that I was plugging. It's because the emitter is pushing those particles away. Okay. Um, if you don't want that to happen, if you want the particles to be born and stay where they are, um, one way to do it is very simple. You can just take the speed value of your emitter. You can see that, you know, so far we play with the rate and we play with just the, on the volume itself. We play with some of these numbers. We haven't touched the speed, but it's a very simple one. You set to one, you set that to zero. Okay. I'm going to do that on both of my emitters at once. Okay, you hit rewind, you hit play, and if you give this time, you will end up with particles. Why do I say give them time if you don't want to wait? Okay, okay. so here's something that's starting to look like a tree. Um, if you don't want to wait, okay, well, there's no point on me, if this tree is not moving, uh, or my camera is not moving, there's no point on me waiting 147 frames to get to this point. 
If I want to get more particles in there, I showed you already, you can do them at once even. You can select both emitters. Okay, we're going to go to the rate of both and we're going to increase that to 2000, for example. Okay, so from 100 to 2000. Here we go, very quickly, now you start getting okay, something that's starting to look like a tree. This is, again, for me to put you in the right direction and push you, I want you to please um, publish your results in the community. Okay, those of you who have access to the community, again, depends on the type of donation that you made. Okay, if you just donated for the regular video recordings, then you get to watch this class and you know try on your own. Those of you who have access to the community, then you know you you have uh, as you may have seen by now the student groups. You can post there a play blast or a screen capture of your layout. What I want you to try this week is just a layout. What is called a layout, okay? Placement of things. I just I will appreciate if you do more than just the tree. So, for example, today we talked about omni emitters. We talked about volume emitters, um, curves. Okay, so you can go ahead, for example, and create. Um, let's go to particles and create an emitter. We're going to make a volume emitter. We hit create, but for the volume, I'm going to use, instead of using the regular cube with the sphere, I'm going to use a torus, for example. Okay, move it over there. Let's see where did I put it. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to zoom out and make sure that I'm looking at the right things. Okay, so here's my feel. Which is weird. Let me just double check my scales here. Yeah, I'm just I went overboard with these numbers. Okay, and I'm going to place this. So somehow I set to Omni when I create I wanted a volume emitter. So let me just switch it to volume. There we go. That's what's happening. And I'm gonna, for example, okay, just as an idea, placing that at the base of the tree. Okay, and you can go ahead and scale this thing and you know do your magic in there and then have this to be. Like a star field around it, uh, you can draw some curves around this thing. Just get yourself familiar, you know, familiar with um, particle emission. Okay, probably put another piece of geometry and paint some particles around it. Or you know, remember what we just talked very quickly. The particle tool. If you want to sketch some particles, and you go go ahead and do, I don't know, another particle system over here. It's just layout. Okay, I'm not. I don't care much about uh, the look of it, the rendering type. Nothing about that right now. Okay. It's just trying to see, uh, see that image, okay, or, or the little video, which is right here, I hope. Let me just find it again, if I didn't close it. Well, it looks like I closed it, so I'll open it again in a minute, but try to find that clip. I'm going to publish, the, uh, I'm going to put on the FTP the clip, or probably just a screen capture, and do your own version of this, okay, by emitting particles. Remember, if I, I have to hit play here to start getting particles of my volume emitter, but again, if these particles are moving too much, it's simple. You can just go back to your channel box, go to the speed, and for example, you could get rid of it completely. And here you go. So you're going to start getting particles. Well, they're still moving, okay? Okay, that's a good thing that happened right now. So you can see that I took my speed and uh, of my emitter 3, my, my actual uh, torus emitter, and the particles are still moving. Is because remember when you see these arrows happening in here, it's because there's still forces being applied. So you can scroll down here, and you have the away from center. You can take that off as well, and the away from axis. Take that off as well. There's nothing else. So now you can probably rewind, hit play, and then you get your particles being stuck. I'm going to hide the polygon so it doesn't get confusing. Here we go. Okay, so now you start getting particles. You can name these things. Okay, this is this, the particle. Um, Particle tool particles that I made. These are from the torus, the leaf, the base. Okay. Get yourself familiar, familiarized with these things. And next week we're going to continue talking about it because there's a lot of stuff that can happen in emission from textures and all those things. So um, there's a long way to go. Uh, so I'm going to jump back to Adobe Connect. I haven't heard a peep from most of you, but um, actually, Rafael, you did ask a question. So if this is your time, to uh, any doubts, any anything that was not clear for what we talked about today? Don't speak all at once. It's fine. This this is going to happen a lot, so I'm used to it. Um, I usually go one by one, but uh, you guys can type it on the. Yeah, it happens at every class. Don't worry, I'm used to it by now. Remember, you can type the questions on the chat window, or you can raise your hand, tell me. Um, if you don't have any questions, just tell me so I know and everything is clear. I did my job correctly. Um, you know, again, having now the recording, something that never happened before until, until today. You guys are the first class of the first new VFX learning open source thing. 
um, before there was no recording, so I wanted to really make sure that everything was clear. But Mario, if everything is good for you, Mario, that's good. Good to see you. Um, so you guys are good. How about you, Rodrigo, um, Giovanna, Rafe? Everything is fine. I hope. Okay, perfect. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit simple. Of course, you gotta, you gotta imagine that this is week one out of technically thirty-six weeks. That is the Maya Dynamics program. Is Maya level one, two, and three? So you know, the, there's, there's a lot of concepts, but this thing sometimes is better to to make sure that the base is covered correctly. Yeah, the homework you will do is uh, three with particles, but you know, something nice. You know, make, make something nice. So try try to find the the Thor. Um, no, I'm gonna put it on the FTP. The little screen capture of it. Use use that as uh, as your inspiration for something. Okay, so it's not just a tree. It's a bit of an environment made of particles. But again, it's just uh, play blasting. If you if you know a bit more of mine, you want to render it, please don't let me stop you. Go all the way. But I don't expect to see more than just uh, particles on the on the screen. Okay, no motion. Just uh, make sure that you try to and try to use all the particle emissions that we talked about today in one way or the other. Uh, haven't heard from uh, Rafael. Everything clear? I oh, know. I think you said everything was good. Um, Rodrigo, any other questions? Perfect. Okay, I'm glad. Well, this went well. Um, I'm happy. So this is this thing is still recording. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the guys on the recording. I'm gonna say goodbye to my guys afterwards. So thank you. Uh, I'm gonna stop it.